This is Ask Congress on Congress WTV. It's the web station that uh, seeks to facilitate and expand personal relationships between the viewing public and the representatives that they place in power. Today we're very privileged to have on our program the distinguished Congresswoman Maxine Waters, who is serving her 10th term for the 35th District of California. Uh, that includes a large part of South, Carol uh, South Central uh, Los Angeles. Congresswoman Maxine Waters is considered by many to be uh, one of the most powerful women in American politics today. She's gained a reputation as a fearless and outspoken advocate for women, for children, for people of color, and, and for the poor, and as well uh, for the American public. Representative Waters has been a longtime advocate of Haiti. She has recently returned from her second trip to Haiti since the recent earthquake, and we'd like to share with you uh, her first-hand experiences there. Uh, good to have you on the program. Delighted to be back. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, you just recently returned, and, and uh, uh, just uh, recently uh, uh, the First Lady uh, was in Haiti. Yes. Uh, maybe to keep the momentum going. Uh, but uh, uh, what is the situation really there today? Well, uh, on my first trip to Haiti following the earthquake, uh, I was there to see what was going on with our own government's uh, role and responsibilities. Uh, so I spent time at our State Department uh, embassy uh, office there uh, and met with the officers of USAID mm -hmm. that was responsible for uh, the humanitarian aid uh, to Haiti. Uh, also, I wanted to view uh, the devastation there so that I could see for myself uh, what had happened, what the needs were, and try and make sure that uh, we were doing everything that we could possibly do uh, to deal with this devastation. Um, the television stations uh, and the news programs that had carried the story of the earthquake did a great job. However, uh, it was nothing like seeing it on the ground mm -hmm. up close. It was absolutely surreal, unbelievable, that this little sort of country could have sustained uh, such damage. Uh, there were buildings that were simply pancaked, mm -hmm. concrete buildings that went from the top uh, to the ground, and people, of course, were still under uh, some of that um, uh, concrete uh, devastation. Uh, and even today, I believe there's still some bodies that have not been pulled out yet. Um, what is the, the what was the total count? About two hundred and thirty thousand people killed. That's one of the largest uh, results of an earthquake. Yes, that has ever happened. Absolutely, uh, the damage was. Uh, extensive damage and uh, not only did you have all of the deaths but the uh, um, injuries broken arms broken legs many of them had to be amputated uh, because um, they didn't get uh, medical care very quickly gangrene was set again they didn't have the um, hospital uh, and uh, emergency services that were needed to deal with uh, uh, a catastrophe of that nature and mm -hmm. that size. So the damage has been awesome and um, the people of Haiti have been absolutely marvelous in the way that they have suffered yet remained resilient and uh, hopeful. Um, they continued to do the very best that they could helping each other um, uh, j just demanding and that they uh, themselves stay alive. How about the rescue efforts? Uh, that uh, uh, When really did they start? Did they start immediately or was there some time interval? Uh, and how do you feel about uh, well, the efforts you know, that were made? I feel that um, the rescue efforts were probably the best that they could have been. Uh, you had our own country, Canada, um, you had France, uh, you had other countries in the Caribbean, everybody pitching in, trying to do something. The nonprofit uh, organizations that were on the ground, uh, nonprofit organizations, the Red Cross, everybody. It was not coordinated. It was helter-skelter. It was hit and miss. It was um, 
people, you know, running over each other, all trying to get it done. Really, to tell you the truth, there is no formula, no plan uh, to, that can be executed uh, with this kind of devastation, of course. Sure. If Haiti had been a better governed country, a country with more resources, a better infrastructure, and some kind of uh, ability to respond to an emergency, they would have been a lot better off. But don't forget, this is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, and they have very little in the way of infrastructure. Uh, and so they were not able to help themselves but very much. They have much. been hit before by uh, hurricanes. floods and That's hurricanes. Right. That's right. And I mean, a series of them. There were four in um, 2008, back to back. Mm -hmm. And so those hurricanes had left them pretty devastated and had washed out roads and bridges, had damaged homes, and uh, people had been injured. Uh, they had not overcome that. And so it has been absolutely overwhelming uh, to watch the um, How catastrophe. How about the, the international effort? Uh, has it been uh, satisfactory to you? It has been good. Um, the international community has donated in so many different ways. And even uh, just a couple of weeks ago, there was the um, International Donors Conference that was taking place uh, in New York at the UN, where uh, all of the countries, even though the United States and others have been pro providing water and shelter and food and all of that, they came in and uh, absolutely committed to dollar amounts for the future development of Haiti beyond the emergency needs. And so I think there was about $10.9 billion that was committed uh, at, that, uh, at that meeting, and about $2.9 billion of that was United States. We had already put in mm -hmm. uh, over $1 billion uh, with the work that we were doing. Again, um, there's still a great need. Mm -hmm. um, the well, you have, excuse me for interrupting, yes. mm -hmm. but you put in some legislation uh, to forgive their the debt. debt. That's right. As a matter of fact, it passed off the floor today. Uh -huh. uh, it had passed off, off the House floor and then gone to the Senate. Uh, some changes were made, uh, and so it had to come back here. But we finally got it passed, and that is to forgive Haiti's debt. What we said was uh, we should use our power uh, as participants with the inter- uh, uh, national community uh, and the multilateral uh, country uh, company uh, uh, operations yep, yep. in order to get that debt reduced or moved, removed, wiped out altogether. And so uh, our treasurer, who is our representative at the IMF and the World Bank, etc., will carry that message. And we've already heard from them that they're willing to do that, to cancel the debt. Tady does, cannot afford to be paying off debt what when they that, have no money. Uh, uh, how much is that debt? Uh, that remaining debt is about $800 million. Mm -hmm. We had gotten about uh, $2.9 billion um, uh, paid off, uh, relieved, relieved from Haiti uh, a year or so ago. And this was the remaining debt uh, that was left, and so that debt will be wiped out. Uh, we have to cut away from you yes. uh, for a moment for a public service announcement, and we'll be back uh, right after that. Thank you.